Hi everyone and thank you very much for inviting me to deliver in this lecture concerning the treatment of diabetes food infection. First of all, I would like to introduce you I, in the classification of the severity of diabetes food infection that is very important as a first step before to start the treatment of any kind of infection. According with this, we can have three, three types of infection, mild, moderate, and severe, and according with the kind of infection, you can treat only with oral, with oral all parenteral agents, or with the uh, additional to parenteral agents with the necessity of the surgical intervention. Starting with the treatment of the mild diabetic foot infection, especially in a superficial wounds, with a short duration of the wounds, and with, uh, without any other complication, you can start with selecting an antibiotic acted against gap positive COVID and particularly against staphylococcus aureus. For mild and moderate infection, usually the oral antibiotic used to be effective up and now, but it's necessary a close follow-up in order to assess the patient to identify any complication or any worsening of the infection. Usually the duration of the treatment for a mild diabetic food infection used to be one, maximum two weeks, but it's important to, um, to assess the patient after two or three days of treatment. And if the patient is not improving, the recommendation is to take in a core tool in order to select the right antibiotic that covering the pathogens that cause or the infection. The other scenario is, this, is the serious infection or uh, um, um, a serious infection that can develop or can uh, gain for a mild infection. In this, uh, Sam, it's important to assess the patient according to some changes that you can, uh, um, you can see at the wound and you can see at the general practice. Uh, concerning the local symptom, it's important to assess the cellulitis uh, in the surrounding skin. And remember that when the cellulitis is more than two centimeters in the, uh, uh, around the peribone skin, this is a sign of severity. And especially when the ulcer is, is dead, and is associated with change in the skin, such as necrosis, and such the discoloration of the appearance of some bullite or such blister at the foot. This is another important sign for severity. Concerning the general aspect, it's important to take in mind what you could, that when you are treating, treating a patient with antibiotic and the patient is not improving, this is another important sign for worsening of the infection. Of course, there is another general characteristic that can cause a complication, especially the vascular status of the patient, and especially when the patient has a systemic sign, especially for fever, tachycardia, tachypnea, or even leukocytosis. The more important thing is to try to uh, identify this patient or to diagnose this severity of infection properly because this patient can worsen it very quickly. You can see here the patient, how the patient was worsening in only one day. And in this case, it's necessary in some moderate infection and in all severe infection, treat this patient through a multidisciplinary team and in the hospital. So the patient needs an hospitalization. In this scenario, the, the bacteria or the pathogen that are affecting the, the, the patient used to be different, not only gram-positive bacteria, but with the participation of the gram-negative and enterobacterial, and in some case, anaerobius. In this case, just the route of the administration used to be different, and the recommendation is to start with the initial parenteral antibiotic for five to six days and eat the patient has a favorable evolution, you can switch to oral antibiotic. In general, there is not evidence about uh, any evidence of some uh, uh, agent um, uh, containing other, just it's important to select the antibiotic when, with the estimation about what the bacteria is causing the infection. Another important recommendation is the principle about that the shortest duration is the better for the patient in order to avoid bacterial resistance and systemic toxicity. But sometimes the patient needs additional to antibiotic surgery and is especially necessary when the patient suffers from gas 
uh, in the deep tissue or has a fistula strata and is pleuritic cavity when the patient has abscesses, necrotacitosis, so, so tissue infection, or anesthetic tissue fluid that can put the lymph or the life of the patient uh, in a treat situation. In this case, it's important to refer the patient to a multidisciplinary team for treating the patient in the hospital when it's necessary that you can have two specialties, one, in, uh, one specialist infectious disease and another specialist as a surgical, uh, as a surgeon training in surgical procedures in diabetic foot. Important to remind that this patient could deteriorate very quickly. And for this reason, it's very important to manage this patient has a heart attack like this, uh, this uh, recommendation coming from this paper for the King's College team does consider this patient as a diabetic foot attack. In this diabetic foot attack, the urgent surgery is mandatory. An urgent surgery in order to perform a radical depriving or all infected tissue and even relook the patient in the uh, following 24 or 84 hours in order to uh, determine if it is necessary a revision surgery for this kind of patient. The infection management in this uh, scenario uh, can be focusing in these four points. The first one, urgent and aggressive surgical deployment. The second one is the IV antibiotic. The third one, of course, is attend the fluid electrolyte and metabolic needs of the patient. Of course, that means select the appropriate good, the appropriate good care for the patient. The surgical approach for diabetic foot infection in severe diabetic foot infection has to follow some recommendations. The first one is exploring infection speed pathway by anatomical foot. That is important, especially when you can have different location of the infection associated with the presentation of the sun ulceration. For instance, this is a plantar ulceration that produces an abscess in the dorsal aspect of the foot. Why? Because the infection is going through the tendon or the fore tendon, flesh or tendon of the toe, and is going down. So the surgery is necessary to explore or the a pathway for dissemination is necessary to the right of the, of the infected tissue. And this is the uh, situation or this is the aspect there of the patient after the surgical deprivation. Very important to make the incision according with the affected compartment and with the vascularization and with the appropriate length. So that means that it's necessary to be aggressive and to do the, the incision that you need in order to remove all the infected tissue. This is another case. You, you can see only the complication in after two days with the uh, spreading of the infection through the um, uh, in, in tendon infection that is spreading from distal and from proximal uh, to the foot. And you can see here how it's very important to, to explore through the com affected compartment, in this case, the central compartment, to drainage the abscess, to remove the infected tendon, and even to remove the bone infected. This is the uh, aspect of the foot after the deprivation. Very important to explore in the hidden abscess, the rooted of the speed, and to ensure that all the infected tissue has been removed. And sometimes this is, a, this is the main causes for a complication of the patient. For instance, this is another patient that we suspected for a uh, soft tissue infection, and we explore in the operating room, and when we show the patient after the surgical intervention one day after, you can see how, how the patient uh, pre, uh, showing a an, an, an necrotic uh, toe and is necessary to revision surgery. And in this case, we identify what is the cause of this infection that is an, um, 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 neonecrosis of the uh, interosseous muscle that is necessary to remove. And you can see how even for more aggressive debridement, but the response of the patient is very good after one day of surgery. The last step is planning the, the, the uh, planning the closure because when you are performing this kind of aggressive debridement, it's very necessary to uh, assure or to ensure that this patient has a very color tour of the new granulation tissue. The recommendation is to use the negative pressure point therapy, especially after surgery, and this is very, very, very helpful, especially when you have to treat this kind of patient 
that is necessary a huge debridement and the patient need for negative pressure in this case associated with distillation and this is the only way to guarantee and to ensure the um, limb preservation of the patient after infection. So in summary, we can say that the starting antibiotic, uh, uh, at starting, sorry, the, uh, the treating of diabetic foot infection with empirical antibiotic from mal infection. It is important the close follow-up and a proper refer to multidisciplinary uh, thing when you uh, identify some worsening of infection, especially in severe infection when it is necessary an urgent and aggressive surgical approach. Remember that the management they should be by a specialized diabetic foot team that is necessary in order to avoid lower load amputation and uneven the death of the patient. Thank you very much for your attention and goodbye.